will try to be quite <laughs> brief. Um, so it will be a, a short presentation, uh, and uh, of course, as it's a short presentation, um, we had to f to make some selection uh, about about the the different, uh, let's say, um, axes and cases um, to show and to focus on. So uh, the next, please, Leticia. Um, so the Crea Patrimoine provides a shared home for archaeologists that you will be, but also collaborators outside the Crea uh, who are working in a, in a very wide range of aspects of the human past across time and space. And that's really one of the distinctive features of the Crea. It's really a center which gathers um, field archaeologists and also specialists of cultural heritage working uh, in different uh, geographical areas and uh, in uh, and being interested in different uh, chronological periods. So for, for the presentation here, I will focus, of course, only on the archaeological um, um, projects of the CREA. Next. Um, so the, the, the CREA uh, is a, an interdisciplinary research center that supports fieldwork, research projects, education and training in archaeology and cultural heritage, and he's doing all these activities through uh, uh, numerous national and international collaboration. And so within ULB, we uh, collaborate with three uh, mainly uh, with three other faculties, of course, the Faculty of Sciences and within the Faculty of Sciences, uh, more, more especially with the Center of Anthropology and Human Genetics, with the Institute of Geosciences, but also with several other um, institute and center of research, uh, uh, for instance, the, the biology center of research. Uh, we collaborate also with the School of Engineering, but that uh, I think uh, Seb will uh, uh, speak about much more when he will present the Panorama platform and also with the Faculty of Architecture. Uh, outside will be the next. Um, we have also several important collaboration on a national level. Well, Belgium, for the people who are not living in Belgium, is always very complicated to understand because of the, the several level of, of powers. So there is a federal and the regional uh, level and also the community level, which is based on the, the language. Um, but I'm, I made uh, a, a short selection here. So we collaborate uh, with very, very close ties and, and very uh, active collaboration with several uh, institutes, museums, schools and universities, uh, and uh, especially, of course, uh, in Brussels, art the Art and History Museum, museum which, which is the former name of the name, name, museum, 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 the Africa the Museum, which is in Turin, the Royal Belgian Institute of Natural Sciences, uh, and in, I would say, in, in um, teaching, um, uh, but also research level, also with uh, um, other universities like UC Louvain, KU Leuven, Ghent University, VUB, and also uh, the, 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 the School of La Cambre, and especially uh, in the section of restoration conservation. And so there are, with all these, uh, these institutions, we have both research pro projects, but also uh, teaching a collaboration um, uh, with them. So there are really very, very active and real collaboration, I would say. There are others, but I, I had to make a selection. Uh, outside Belgium now, uh, next, um, we, 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 we have several uh, also collaborations, and you will see that um, the, 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 the few, the, the research themes and the research projects I will uh, speak about uh, below uh, are, of course, uh, developed within these collaborations. So um, th there are several collaborations with, of course, uh, African universities uh, from the Benin, Burkina Faso, um, uh, um, the Republic uh, uh, du Congo, uh, also with Egypt, uh, in Europe uh, with France, Greece, uh, uh, Italy, uh, in the Near East, uh, Jordan and Lebanon, uh, in South America with Peru, uh, 
in, in Europe, uh, Asia, I would say Turkey, the UK, the USA. So there I just make a, a very short summary of the different institutions with which we collaborate. But there, there, are, there are, of course, many others. And I didn't, didn't have time and space uh, to uh, mention all of them. And I apologize for those who do not appear on the screen. Um, so next, please. The, the, the research of the Kriya Patrimon now falls in, I would say, um, in three main themes, if we have to, to, to try to present these themes in a kind of collective way. And these themes, of course, overlap through different research projects. And I would say that if we have, uh, there are the three main themes on archaeological projects per se, and archaeological themes per se, which first is understanding the environments, second, understanding the social practices, and by social practices, of course, we encompass a, a very wide span, uh, religious, funerary, ceremonial, feasting, and I know very well that all these terms can be further discussed for the meaning, and, of, and, and the third main uh, research uh, theme is the material culture and technologies, and of course this third theme also overlap with the second one, understanding, understanding social practices, and with the first one. And in a fourth, a very general, I would say, cap, the heritage, cultural heritage, which I will not develop here. Uh, so next to these research themes, um, we have uh, a, a very wide span of research projects, and I'm really sorry that we don't have the time to, to go deeper in these uh, research projects and, and speak more uh, about them. It's just a kind of list, and I'm terribly sorry about that. Um, but we have a very wide span of research projects in field archaeology, and, and you have to know that uh, uh, at least compared with the other French-speaking universities in Belgium, I would say that the Croix Patrimoine uh, gathers the, 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 the most numerous uh, field projects uh, in French-speaking Belgium. And as you can see on the map, I, I, uh, I, I wrote down uh, the different countries where our projects uh, are taking place. Uh, so outside Belgium, there is, of course, uh, France, uh, Italy, uh, around the Mediterranean, France, Italy, Greece, uh, in, in the Levant, uh, in the Near East, uh, Jordan. Uh, we uh, used to uh, direct a, a, a very big and important excavation, which was a Pamea in Syria, which of course now is interrupted. Egypt, uh, in, in, uh, we have also at both um, f field work excavation, but also um, uh, anthropological and research uh, work in the in the Niger, uh, Burkina Faso, Benin, and uh, field uh, excavations, field projects in Peru and Bolivia. Next. So if I have to summarize briefly all, uh, j just to give you the names and the places where we are working uh, and with the directors from the CREA who uh, are responsible of this uh, field work in collaboration with several other institutions, both in the countries where the excavation take place takes place, but also uh, in collaboration with other scientific and academic institutions. Um, in Egypt, um, we are excavating at the necropolis of Thebes. Uh, it's uh, uh, Laurent Bavé who is directing these excavations. Uh, it's both a project of excavation and also a project of restoration as well. And uh, he's focusing, he's, he's working on um, three important uh, graves of the 18th dynasty. Uh, in Jordan, Petra, um, it, it, there it's also a, a long-term project, uh, uh, archaeological project. Uh, for now, the, the, the research focus on the theaters of Petra and the peripheral sanctuaries. And the director for the CREA is Laurent Tolbeck, and he's, uh, he's collaborating uh, both with the French Institute um, of uh, uh, Lebanon and uh, Jordan, uh, <clears throat> and, uh, and of course, um, so with the, with the French uh, archaeological teams there. 
In Greece, uh, there is the fieldwork in East Crete in Itanos. We focus on the necropolis. I'm directing this excavation with Didier Vivier, and the, 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 the excavation are, um, are, are, are carried under the auspices of the Belgian School of Athens. But there as well, we have several um, collaborations, uh, of course, with the Archaeological Service of Eastern Crete, but also with the INSTAP Institute uh, of Eastern Crete and with um, other um, colleagues from other universities. Uh, the other, let's say, uh, field work in, in the Mediterranean, it's in Italy, uh, on the site of Alba Fucens. There as well, the, 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 the excavations focused on the area of the Forum, and the director is Cecile Vels. It's also a project with, uh, which resume uh, work which was um, undertook before, already before by Belgian team, and, and, and a previous uh, professor uh, at the University of Brussels, which was Jean Balti, who also worked here, and Jean Binguet. So it's in on, on the long term. Uh, another um, excavation fieldwork, it's in France, in Corsica, the uh, Bouche de Bonifacio, uh, where, is a, uh, where is a participation, a co-direction by Sébastien Clairbois, who is here as well. And there the focus is especially on the uh, quarries, on, on the stone quarries, Roman stone quarries, and it's of course in collaboration with several uh, French institutions and universities who are work working in Corsica. Next please. Um, outside the Mediterranean area and outside, let's say, the, 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 the large chronological span, let's say, of antiquity, there are also several others excavations. Uh, medieval archaeology, we have uh, several projects on medieval archaeology. Um, uh, one of the leading, let's say, um, sides uh, among our projects is the, the excavation directed by François Blary there as well in collaboration with several other French institutions. Uh, and the excavation takes place at the Cistirian Abbey of Preuilly. Uh, in South uh, America, Two, two important uh, field works and, and long-term excavation. The first one is at the site of Pachacamac. It's uh, the so-called ISMA project directed by uh, Peter Hekaut. Uh, and it, 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 dealt both, it dealt with a, a, a pilgrim center uh, and, um, and it focuses a lot and it's very much interested in the ritual practices uh, 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 which are followed in this context. The, 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 the last, the other project in South America, it's in Bolivia, of course, for the moment uh, it's interrupted because of the, of the COVID, and it's subaquatic excavation at the Titicaca Lake, which is located between Bolivia and Peru. And it's, uh, it's a project which is very much uh, interested in uh, the, the, the developments and the evolution of landscape and coastal environments. Um, with a particular aspect that uh, the context is obviously a, a cultural ritual context where uh, they have deposited and threw several uh, objects uh, in uh, the lake. Um, next, please. In Belgium, we have also several um, excavations, uh, important excavation in, in Belgium, um, mainly uh, uh, on one hand uh, Gallo-Roman uh, sites and on the other hand uh, uh, medieval as well um, sites. Um, the two uh, outside Brussels who are um, working for the moment is the, the one which is uh, at Ezoprel, uh, close to Namur, if some of you know where, where, where is it. And it's an excavation of a Gallo-Roman villa and sanctuary, and that's something very interesting. It's the, the, the link and the relationship between these two contexts. It's directed by the archaeologist of the Créa Patrimoine, uh, Nicolas Paridance. And the other uh, site is Toin, which is a fortified site site, uh, also directed by Nicolas Paridance, and Toin is also one of our uh, field 
training field for undergraduates in archaeology. Uh, the third, um, it's not a side, but third big project, and we will hear uh, about it uh, later, it's the Brussels Archaeological Survey, <clears throat> where there is a very big team working on uh, this Brussels Archaeological Survey. François Blary, who is uh, the, the, uh, one of the two directors of the CREA with SEB, and uh, Paolo Charouadas, Philippe Sosnowska, and Ben Vanionov, who is really the core team of this very, very big and extremely big project, project also in a black and black and black place, I would say, which is the grand class in grasses. Um, next to this field work, uh, uh, we have uh, other research projects. We can go to the next one. Of course, these research projects uh, overlap and, and are related very often also with the field work. So each of them feed, feed each other, I would say. But if we, if we have to summarize in a way the two, let's say, big axes, there are other, of course, uh, um, smaller research projects, but the, the, the axes which um, federate uh, several um, periods and areas uh, among research, the research projects of the CREA, we could say that there are two main axes, one uh, which is uh, related to pottery studies and which works on pottery, uh, especially from the point of view of the production, the distribution and the uses, and rise and discuss questions of cultural and economic interactions. Uh, three three uh, let's say sub uh, section in these uh, pottery studies one which is dealing with the ancient mediterranean world from the early iron age to the hellenistic period and i'm i'm directing these these uh, these um, collective uh, research uh, another one which uh, deals and focus on the near east from the late roman to the abbasid period and there it's agnes voca who is uh, directed uh, directing this this second uh, project and a third one uh, which uh, uh, deals and studies the ceramic tradition from central africa and which is currently suspending related uh, related to the work of the Niger and who is directed by Olivier Gosselin and there is this very big project of uh, making uh, an atlas of ceramic traditions. Um, the second, I would say, main axe, um, which also overlaps with the pottery studies, but the second main axe uh, of research projects outside, let's say, uh, the field archaeological project is uh, the technology of the materials. We have several there points where we really focus uh, closely to the technology of the materials, uh, the construction of ma the construction materials, tiles and bricks, and there is a TCA project which is led by Philippe Sosnowska, uh, focusing on medieval, uh, you see, and early Renaissance uh, periods, the archaeometallurgy, uh, and there there are, I would say, two uh, two axes, one which is very much interested in the extraction process and technological expertise from the Bronze Age to the Classical period in the Northern Aegea, and another one which is the technology of weaponry in the Northern Aegea as well in the Archaic period, and a third uh, which is dealing uh, and dealt with copper production in the Anuary Basin in the Republic of Congo. Uh, always technology of the material, sculpture, there the study of the technological transformation of the modeling sculpting process during the industrial area and which is directed by Sébastien Clairbois. And the third one, the textiles, the textile production in Dandy and Bogu, uh, North Benin, which is a project uh, carried on with the British Museum, directed, co-directed by Olivier Gosselin, and which is also, also a preservation uh, a, a heritage project which because one of the aim is really to keep also this tradition to save this tradition uh, and this craft expertise of textile next i've almost finished um of course to to under take all these uh, uh, projects, uh, national and international, uh, the CREA patrimoine benefits from important institutional funding, which have been attributed to collective and individual research projects. And I just made a very short summary uh, and a selection of some of them. Of course, there are the, the European fundings. Uh, the CREA uh, has been granted four Marie Curie uh, postdoctoral fellowship. I just gave the subject of these four 
for um, um, postdoctoral fellowships. Uh, you see the one it's on metal technology, the second one it's on social developments on early Iron Age archive Crete, and uh, the, the third one on the early manifestation of Islam, and um, the, the fourth, the different fates of architecture also on uh, Islamic um, architecture. Uh, it benefits as well of other important funding, uh, the FNRS, which uh, if there are French people who are listening to us, which is the equivalent of the SNRS, we benefit from uh, research programs from the FNRS, both for the field work, but also for um, other kind of research programs. Uh, we also had PhD fellows and postdoctoral fellows, um, uh, which are funded and supported by the FNRS, and also a senior research fellow. We also uh, have a different collaboration, let's say in a federal level, which allows collaboration between French-speaking universities and uh, Flemish-speaking universities. And there are two uh, EOS programs where we took part, the Pyramid and Progress, which is more a, 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 a project on, on 19th, uh, tw early 20th century reception of antiquity, heritage, and so on. And the Crumble uh, project, which there is uh, a project about um, uh, which studies the, 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 the incineration, uh, residual incineration in the Belgian area. Uh, there is also a five year research arc program. Uh, for the moment, uh, the one is that uh, of Sébastien Clairbois on the technology of 19th, late 19th, early 20th sculpture. Three Fed Twin joined research projects. The Fed Twin are extraordinary projects because they allow us to have really joined research projects with Belgian federal institutions. In our case, we have three joint projects, one joint project with, uh, um, sorry, one joint project with the Africa Museum and one art and two art and his and two research projects with uh, the Musée du Cinquantenaire. Uh, and of course, the, the Wiener Pack Foundation, uh, which is a foundation who supports joint projects between the Créa Patrimoine, the University of Oxford or the University of Cambridge. For the moment, we have joint projects with the University of Oxford. Next. Of course, uh, among the other, I would say, uh, activities and 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 uh, and uh, uh, axis of the Crea Patrimoine, there are also the fact that the the center provides expertise and runs public funding fieldwork project in close collaboration with several public services in Belgium. So um, some of the sites I already mentioned uh, in Wallonia and in Brussels benefit from these uh, from these uh, projects, uh, benefit from this collaboration. And this is also very important because it provides as well contracts uh, for our uh, graduate students, and it provides also training. It allows to provide also training for uh, the students. The center also runs, as I've already said, the annual undergraduate training excavation in field archaeologies uh, in the sites of Toin and Preuilly. And uh, on a master level, we also take students, but uh, on selection uh, in the different uh, field works throughout the Mediterranean and elsewhere. The last uh, uh, let's say, uh, uh, yes, it organizes as well, of course, through his education mission, I would say. It organizes, of course, graduate seminars, workshops, and international symposia. We have a, 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 an annual CREA seminar, which generally focuses on a trans uh, geographical, trans chronological subject. Um, uh, several years ago, it was funerary archaeology, for instance. Uh, and so it really gathers all the people around these uh, subjects. Uh, and the last part is, of course, the, the publications of the CREA. So this is the next slide. Uh, it's a publication of the CREA. We have a, a series, a collection of volumes, Études d'archéologie, since 2006. These, the three of, uh, the three covers uh, which are there are 
the, the, the recent ones, you see that it's, uh, again, it really reflects the, the, the wide variety of, of, the, of, the, of the work of the CREA. We have uh, antiquity, we have medieval art, we have uh, cast collections, and there are two forthcomings uh, which are really under preparation, is one on pots and graves, the lost cemeteries of Tinos, and another one, which I will not read because I'm not speaking Spanish, is the monography of, uh, of the collective volume of Peter Eckhart, which really gives a, a, a survey uh, and publication of the, the whole year of research uh, in Pashakamak at Peru. Last one, and uh, uh, that's a, a small uh, <laughs> view of, of, the, of the campus, uh, uh, of, of uh, uh, the gatherings, and you can see that the atmosphere is also extremely collective and extreme, extremely pleasant. Uh, I just made a small summary of, of, of the number of members, uh, what are the facilities, the equipments, the web database, and there are many, many more uh, which are in progress and I didn't uh, take and I didn't present here. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You very it was a very, a very good overview of all the projects that are running in uh, Well Bay. I hope uh, uh, others Thank also you. find it uh, as interesting. And uh, now we're going to go to Sebastien Clairbois that uh, will introduce the Panorama Tour. The floor is yours. Yes, good morning, everyone. I think we'll, we'll use the same system. If you can uh, maybe Sure, sure. Um, get to the first slides, or maybe the second one. Uh, okay, thank you. So, um, good morning, everyone. I'm Sebastian Clairbois. I'm an archaeologist and an art historian, uh, associate head of the Crea Patrimoine, the research center in archaeology, as you now uh, know, uh, founder and current member of Panorama, on which I will say a few words today. Um, so, I think I have the floor for 10 minutes. I will be very brief then. Uh, I will speak about seven minutes and I will show you a short movie of three minutes uh, from, the, from the slides. So uh, Panorama is, a, is an interfaculty technological platform created in 2017 in which all the uh, actors gathered uh, by a common will to collaborate, uh, bringing together, uh, we hope, the best resources in archaeology, architecture, uh, image engineer, engineering and advanced engineering in fields where uh, fundamental and applied research are combined through uh, specific achievements. These expertise are uh, assembled as the piece of uh, one body uh, along digital imaging chain opératoire from data uh, acquisition from the sides of an object to uh, uh, architecture um, to their production and exploitation. It is involved upstream in all uh, theor theoretical questions, acquisitions, processing techniques, uh, the development of tools and uh, IT or engineering solution uh, in data uh, representation issues, and um, it fuels uh, scientific research or R&D purposes, which is applied research, but downstream, the input is an added value regarding our service to the uh, community duty by um, showcasing the heritage and destination to both uh, public and general public uh, through tailor-made developments uh, on a wide range of production, matching the general goals, uh, for example, 3D animations, uh, teaching minded support systems, interactive image systems for exhibition, and so on. So actually, in words, uh, I used to stress our core business overlaps the five lines of research you have here on the screen, data acquisition, preservation and carving, multimodal scientific development, education, sharing with uh, the public. Uh, Panorama was founded by three labs based upon their core expertise uh, around the field of digital survey and conservation of uh, heritage, the Crea Patrimoine uh, in archaeology and heritage, Alice in uh, architecture, uh, the LISA in uh, Polytechnic School, and joined this year by ATM, Aerothermal Mechanics, uh, which is specialized in the development of variable payloads, which uh, now allows Paranoma to develop imaging technologies by uh, drone. Uh, well, maybe I think uh, that a few examples will say more than a thousand words, so I will show you a few uh, examples, selection of our research programs and 3D achievements. So, Leticia, you can pass on to the, you can move on to the, yeah, uh, thank you. This is the virtual tour of the uh, Maison du Peuple by Victor Horta, a very famous building in Brussels, uh, destroyed, uh, unfortunately, building. It is a 360 virtual rendering uh, movie with uh, virtual camera position, rendering options tweaking, 
And as well, we develop an interface uh, for touchscreen tablets with multilingual options, integration of uh, 3D animations, uh, implementation of picking points, picking of uh, interest. But above all, the project is made for uh, the specialists who study the preserved elements of the architecture, uh, which as just say is now destroyed, the plans, the blueprints, to test the uh, validity of the models of restitution and to study in particular uh, the attendance capacity and the circulations. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, I think it's normal because you have a you have a movie. Uh, you can you can play on in a few seconds. This is the uh, 3D photogrammetrical survey of the Preuilly Cistercian Abbey. Um, the purpose of the project here was to acquire a, a maximum of spatial data of the third Cistercian Abbey in France and to combine them with the survey of uh, the archaeological structures to understand the different uh, chronological layers of the building. And this is the, the workflow you have uh, on the screen. It's a short movie, three minutes long, so you can just watch it. This is really the workflow of uh, uh, what uh, Panorama is capable of. Normally you have, you have the sound, uh, Leticia, but I'm not sure it's working. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm yeah. trying, but uh, okay. I can think I can use hearing myself. It's okay. This is the low def texturing model, but you have the clown points here. Okay, thank you. Leticia, you can, you can move on, on the next slide, please. Thank you. Um, this is more architecture. It is scan survey of the Chateau de Senef, uh, Petit Théâtre, a small theater, which is an, an, here an on-site uh, photogrammetric and laser grammatic acquisition of the uh, Chateau de Senef Petit Théâtre, made by Charles de Wailly in uh, 1779. The option here was to produce through uh, an accelerated perspective. You can Move, I think there are um, three or four uh, slides on the same topic. Um, it, is, uh, it is made to produce a clear vision of the architectural cuts of the building for an optimal vision and survey of the building. It is more here a methodological 
brainstorming on the uh, architectural uh, representation and modelization for research uh, purposes, but of course, um, didactic uh, issues uh, can be addressed on this basis as well. And uh, yeah, thank you. And um, yeah, you can move on to the last set. Um, okay, thank you. This is the survey of the Roman uh, granny queries uh, on whom um, uh, Athena talked about uh, uh, lately from the uh, Lavezzi Islands in Corsica, southern France. And I allow myself to conclude on, on my project, uh, supported by uh, Panorama, of course, because it is uh, or it addresses um, the Mediterranean archaeology issue, which is within the core expertise, expertise sought in uh, Kiwis, and which make the, um, uh, the complement to the presentation of the research in the eastern uh, Mediterranean area uh, in Itanos by uh, Athena. The project aimed at the study of uh, the Roman granite quarries of the Lavazzi Islands in southern Corsica, in particular. Uh, this query on the island of uh, Cavallo. Uh, in addition to the uh, excavation, we used photogram photogrammetry to make a, a large natural, this, what you can see here, a zenithal PG of the size by drone. Uh, given their size, the traditional photographic means were indeed ineffective, and photogrammetry, on the other hand, is able to produce more useful images for the st study of the structures, but also to uh, materialize the archaeological data uh, and here you have the input in red, you have the implementation of the service carried out in 2020. And next slide, please. Um, 3D photogrammetry was uh, also used to produce 3D point clouds uh, of the queries on which you can work online in an interactive way. Archaeologists, as you can see here, can implement the records, uh, stratigraphy units in particular. And for structures in elevation, it is obviously a plus to be uh, able to visualize uh, for study these data in uh, three dimensions. Eventually, and this is the next, yeah, next slide. Thank you. We used a normal mapping technique to reveal the eroded relief you can see here, uh, relief uh, located near the quarries. And the results allowed us to better visualize the engraved feature. You can see it on the right. Uh, picture, but also to reveal a cantar, you can see on the far right of the right picture, um, a cantar that is not visible uh, to the naked eyes and which make us believe that the character is a Hercule here, uh, often honored by the Roman uh, in the quarries. And there is a last slide where you can see uh, maybe a better the um, carving techniques uh, in the medallion, but also the cantar on the right. Here we are, I'll stop here. Uh, there are vastly further examples. Uh, this is more an overview, if you will, and thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you very much, Sebastian. Uh, it's a very, very cool tool, I would say, because uh, it gives you really an insight of uh, what you're doing, and it's very, actually it's very visual, right? So um, I will continue now with, uh, again, uh, Professor Tsingarida uh, on the presentation of uh, Itanos. I am, uh, again, um, putting the presentation for you in my screen. One second. So um, we, we had to, to, to choose, of course, one, one, one of, of the, 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 the sites uh, and the archaeological um, the field work, um, uh, I would say, abroad, and uh, so I, I, I propose to 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 present what we are doing in the necropolis of Itanos in eastern Crete. So the the the, the team of ULB contacts a research program in the ancient site of Itanos. Uh, there you have a, a, an amazing view of the site uh, of Itanos. As you can say, see, it's a coastal site. Uh, next one, it's located in the far east site. You can see it on the map uh, in red dot. It's it's um, it's located in the far east side of Crete. And uh, um, next next please, um, we know that uh, already during the second and the third millennium, uh, the history of all the area, uh, the, the, the top area you, you can see, um, uh, is closely, was closely associ associated with uh, a harbour settlement, which was a settlement of Parlecastro Rusolacos. You can see it framed in red on your screen. And uh, the Parlecastro Rusolacos site, which was, so it's a Bronze Age site initially, uh, is excavated and was excavated by the British School uh, of Athens. Um, the, 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 a survey was undertaken 
and we can go to the next, a survey was undertaken in the 90s, in the 1990s by uh, the Greek Archaeological Service in collaboration with the French School of Athens and several other universities, among them ULB, and the, 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 the survey and the, gen the general project it was a co-direction uh, led by Didier Vivier. So the, this first uh, phase of, of work, uh, which uh, among the different programs had a program of survey, a survey of the whole territory of Fitanos, and, and you can see it's really the, the top, I can I cannot show it on the map, but on the map you can see this is triangular shape of the map from Palais Castro onwards, towards the east, this is really the, 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 the old territory, uh, the old territory of Eitanos, but also there was a survey to try to understand the evolution of the occupation of this territory throughout the ages, and uh, found out that the, 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 the zone of the peninsula, the southern zone of the peninsula, including where Eitanos will develop and uh, uh, later on, um, uh, there were, of course, Bronze Age material which was associated with the Rusolakos uh, site. Uh, however, it shows that uh, in the zone of Eitanos, uh, uh, where the city will be built, we have very, very few Minoan shirts. And this is very, very uh, interesting and very important. Why? Because regarding the settlement of Itanos, material evidence suggests, therefore suggests that uh, in what will become later the city area from the, from the 8th, 7th century onwards, the city area and its territory, the occupation starts in the 9th century BC. So we have here a site which has not been developed on an early site of Bronze Age period. This is quite important. It seems, uh, and what I'm showing here are the several material evidence which allow us to date the earlier occupation of the site of Itanos. There are some shirts which can be dated to the 9th century now, uh, through also uh, context. And uh, uh, there is this amazing piece, which is the pixies, which kind of box you see with the scene of battle, uh, which was excavated in the necropolis by the Greek Archaeological Service, and which is now at the Museum of Ayos Nicolas, and which is uh, dated to the um, second half of the 8th century. So the earliest occupation of the site and its territory can go back uh, to the uh, 9th century BC. Uh, it seems therefore that Itanos was reoccupied, and we can go to the next one, the site was reoccupied after a general abandonment of the area. This is a general uh, trend, a general pattern, I would say common pattern, a pattern after the collapse of the, Mi the Minoan and Mycenaean palaces in the late Minoan III, um, the people goes in the mountains, uh, settle in the mountains in fortified to, to defend themselves. And uh, slowly, slowly, they come back, uh, then sometimes come back to previous settlements, and sometimes, like in Nitanos, obviously, they, they, they found a new settlement. And what is very important here is that the motivation behind this foundation is the location close to the sea. Uh, clearly, uh, Itanos offered uh, a kind of, uh, of a, a protected bay to the, uh, to the ships uh, who were coming from the east, Cyprus, the Levant, and Egypt, and which start again from the 9th, 8th century to cross the Mediterranean and to develop again uh, 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 maritime trade networks. And this is clear also when you see the maps, it's uh, the bottom right on your on your slide, where you see the currents, the, 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 the currents of the sea, and clearly around Itanos, uh, the sea is very calm, and still now, the little photo you see with the sh the, the boat, uh, still now, when the sea is bad, the, 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 the boats who are coming from Africa, for instance, stop there, wait before going up and doing the tower again, the top of the peninsula. So this is a, a, an important element, because we have here a real harbour city, a city which was developed because of the connectivity and because of the maritime trade. Next, please. 
Um, and um, so that's a, that's one of the views. Uh, you see that there are two uh, bays. The one bay in the in the front uh, of the of the right upper uh, photo is the bay where we think uh, must have been located the harbor. Part of the harbor now uh, has been um, has. Athena, ah. we, we lost you for a Next. second. Yes, yes, yes. Next, please. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a very general structure of the organization of the occup occupation of the space of the settlement. Uh, it follows a, a common organization for the Cretan cities. In fact, you have two acropolis, the 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 the, the urban, the, the, the settlement, the center of the settlement is where you have the red circles and the orange circles. The two red circles are the two acropolis. Here we have a city with two acropolis. And in between the two acropolis, we think we have where this the, the agora, so the civic center of the city when it starts to develop from the seventh century onwards. In front, uh, where is the, red, the yellow uh, cycle? Uh, it's the necropolis in the cemetery of Itanos, and it's where we excavate and where the excavation of the ULB are taking part. Since 1995 to 1999, 2011, 2015, and now we start, we resume a new program, 2021, 2025, and we'll go quite quickly. Next one. Um, so uh, when we start the excavation there, there have been earlier excavation uh, from the, the French in the 50s, and they were looking, there was a fashion there, they were looking for min Minoan um, uh, ruins and Minoan, Minoan uh, um, ruins. And in fact, they didn't find any Minoan ruins. They, they find uh, a, a, a whole group of graves. They identify initially as one big grave, and you will see that it was not one big grave, and they left it. Next, please. Uh, sorry. Um, so what we found was a cemetery which partly excavated and initially we decided we, the, the aim was to finish the excavation and try to understand what was going on there in the cemetery. And as you can see, we found a cemetery which was first, next one, uh, already plundered uh, since the antiquity. There you can see the, 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 the pit that was dug by the the, the the plunders from the antiquity, from the, the fourth, uh, fifth century uh, AD, and where they threw away the amphora and the cups they didn't need. So it was already plundered. Uh, next, please. Uh, it was, but it was a cemetery which was densely occupied, and where you can see it's it's two two tombs, uh, and in fact they recut the old tomb. You see there are the 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 the, the only the um, the legs of the former uh, disease, which are there, they have been cut in order to reuse the place. So it's a really very, very densely occupied uh, gray uh, cemetery. Next, please. Which, uh, and there you can see really the, the different uh, succession of tombs. The round pit, it's a, it's a seventh century pit, it's much older pit, and then the, the purple one, it's a uh, late fifth, early fourth, and the, the small orange ones are uh, uh, third, second century BC. So you see really one tomb overlaps the other, one tomb reuse the other, one tomb recut the other because it's also partly cut in the rock. Next, please. But what surprised us and what uh, uh, was extremely interesting and pushed us to go on uh, with the excavations and the program there is that um, we did a, a, a trench um, west-east uh, from the densely occupied necropolis is the left uh, picture on your screen. And we discover there, next please, that we had a completely different nature of occupation between the two sides. We have a path road, the, the, the aerial photography you can see on the bottom right, the red uh, line, it's the pathway which really articulates the zone. On the left side, which is the, west, the east, the uh, western side, yes, uh, we had a completely different um, nature of occupation. It's a huge complex, a huge building. No tombs except one 
uh, very late Hellenistic grave, which really was recut in the building. And on the western side and on the eastern side, you have this very densely occupied necropolis from the late 5th to the 4th century, the 1st century BC. Next, please. This, of course, pushed us to um, develop and go on the excavation on the western side, because what we discovered was the, the big building, the big complex we had there was a complex dated to the 6th century BC, from the early 6th century to the late 5th century BC, the first phase. And this is extremely interesting and quite unique in Cretan archaeology, since there is a gap. There is a gap between 7th century tombs and classical period graves. We don't have a lot of uh, material evidence of graves. Uh, that doesn't mean that they didn't bury the deaths, but obviously they are not any more visible in our archaeological uh, evidence. And this one, this 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 building is extremely interesting because it's it's located in a cemetery which is used with graves. Let's say in the eighth seventh century there is a gap, there is a building in the middle of the gap, and then again in the late 5th, uh, 5th late 5th, 4th century, the, the graves uh, appear again. Next, please. So that was the result of the former campaign of excavation. You can really clearly see the pathway on the east side, the, the necropolis of the late 5th, 4th uh, until 1st century BC, and on the western side, this uh, complex. And this complex is, of course, extremely interesting. Why? Because it was possible for us to reconstruct his long-term occupation. Next, please. Um, <clears throat> uh, so that was the first phase before the complex was built. It was a 7th century uh, funerary area where we have pits, incineration pits, and you have one, you have the, the two, three residue of these incineration pits on the three photos you have in front of you. We had some residual material which allow us to date them. Next, please. After this first phase of occupation, so yes, this is the, the, the different kind of material we have found. We have some imports there, also Laconian imports, which is quite important also to understand the connections, the trade connections of the city. Next, please. Um, the next, uh, the next, uh, the, the seventh century occupation, uh, we were able to reconstruct with the pits we found. We found uh, some remains of enclosure walls, and you can see on the left hand, uh, on the left side of the plan, you, you have these huge uh, enclosure walls with two important pits. You can see them, which are uh, um, uh, funerary pits. Next, please. And what is extremely interesting is that. The, the yes, you can see there the, the 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 pits, but how they were reused by the funerary complex of the sixth century, which include them in his plan. Next, please. So this is the plan of the sixth century phase where the build, big complex is uh, uh, reconstructed. You have a 3D reconstruction as well, which was done with the LISA uh, section um, <clears throat> uh, we, we, we spoke about before with Seb. So you can see that what happened, we have a big building with a hearth room where clearly from the material we find there, we have uh, feasting ceremonies which are taking place, a large yard on the western part with pits, I will come back later. Uh, a small room, we don't know if it's a, it's a roofed room or an open air room, but which include one of the pits and a large yard on the southern part of the building. What is quite interesting there is we'll have a building where we have clearly feasting ceremonies and pits. Next, please. Yes, that's the, the reconstruction of the building. We can go on. Uh, yes, that was the corridor of the building. And that's the kind of material we found in the hearth. You can see the hearth, it's a square uh, room with the central hearth. We have a lot of imports of the 6th century. And that's also very important because until very recently, we thought that Crete was completely close to outside contacts. And here clearly we are in a harbor city and there are a lot of connections. We have imports from Asia, from Rhodes. We have imports from Cyclades. We have imports from Attica. Next, please. And you see all that at drinking vessels except one which is an oil uh, flask uh, that's a view of the of the hearth room next 
And there, uh, it's just a detail, but since I don't have my cursor, you have a detail of one of the pits. These are ritual pits. In fact, we 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 analyze um, uh, the, 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 the earth and we had residual. Next, please. From that's all the pit which were cut in the in the rock and which are ritual pits, and we found residues of of grapes, uh, um, of grapes, of figs, uh, which have been burned in a very very low temperature, which clearly attest that it's not cooking; it's really a ritual activities kind of of offerings, probably to the dead. Uh, next, please. Yes, we can go on because. Uh, here it's uh, this is just to to say the analysis of the pits and uh, the other uh, element which is very important it's uh, in this uh, sixth century phase as I told you they have enclosed they have included two tombs two pits in the southern part in the northern part and they have really built around the pits a kind of of uh, of uh, platform with with uh, schist uh, and the pits were completely cleaned uh, and they have reused one of the cooking pots with a hitra which was probably an incinerary reused uh, uh, vessel completely cleaned and it was uh, deposited in the middle of the pit like a cenotaph and around this pit they were going on they undertook uh, several ritual activities next please Within the 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 hitra, we found also rest of olive leaves. That's the olive leaves we found. Next, and after the the end of the sixth century, early fifteenth century, there is a destruction, uh, probably from an earthquake of of the sixth century building. But they go on reusing it. They go on reusing uh, in the first half of the fifth century, and they go on. Uh, they continue ritual activities within the space, which are now distracted by within the spaces, uh, which uh, are still, let's say, limited by the walls and uh, towards the pits we have seen. Uh, uh, next, please. Uh, next. In the fifth century, they reuse the main corridor, which is next to the earth room. They, they, they install, they, they completely seal the, the earlier hearth you can see the hearth there um, as we found it after the excavation after taking off the ceiling they have put on it uh, next please and then re they reuse the corridor to install two ritual installation one which is a hearth uh, an altar and another one which is a basin for a ritual uh, ablution next please and what is very important they go on uh, uh, they go on uh, doing uh, continuing ritual practices around one of the pits, which is the southern pit where you, you saw we have found the, the cooking pot, the hitra, and next to this, uh, to this pit, they erect uh, this lutarian, which is a, a, a shape, a quite big shape for ablution and ritual bathing. I'm going on because I don't want to to lose or to. So that's the, the, the fifth century. We can go on, we can go on, Leticia, so we don't take too much time. This is the different material we have found in the different parts of the reuse phase of the fifth century. No. Um, Yes, there. And at the second half, at the end of the fifth century, uh, the building is slowly abandoned, and uh, the uh, neck at the eastern part of the path road, we have now the new graves uh, of the uh, late fifth, early fourth century, which are put there are individual graves, as you can see. And what is interesting is that they leave the whole building, the whole complex, completely visible. So they have a whole area in this uh, in this uh, cemetery which is distracted, but preserved and respected in a, in a way. And if you look at uh, carefully, you can see that the orientation of the first grave follow the orientations of the walls of the earlier abandoned complex. So it must have been something quite important in the funerary landscape. Next, please. And there we have, of course, the different phases of the necropolis, of the cemetery, the cemetery is so before, which is densely occupied. First, there are individual graves. Next, please. 
with uh, several funeral assemblage. That's the, the individual graves of the late 5th, 4th century. Next, please. There is a second phase, which is a much more monumentalizing phase of the, of the um, uh, late 4th, 3rd century. Next, please. Uh, with some uh, interesting, uh, very few, uh, <laughs> let's say, precious findings, uh, but I want to show it that. Next, please. And then we have enclosure, uh, family enclosures, with several several tombs with our, which are in uh, uh, enclosure, uh, with, in, within wall enclosure. Unfortunately, the bones were very badly preserved and we couldn't undertake a DNA analysis to be sure that we have their family plots. We can go on. There are several very interesting and imported wares there from the Hellenistic periods onwards from Egypt because Etanus becomes a uh, Ptolemaic base in Crete. And we can go on. We had uh, several um, preserved um, uh, pieces from these uh, Hellenistic funerary monuments. Next, please. And an altar. And in fact, we undertook a complete restoration, uh, conservation of this part of the necropolis. This is a 3D reconstruction of what we wanted to restore. And next, please. And this is the restoration works uh, while we are uh, reconstructing the funerary monuments of the necropolis to uh, propose that also to the public, to the visitors, for them to understand better what is going on in this site, which is quite a, a complex site. Next. I think it's finished. Yes, this is a different... Um, 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 the different phases, we can go on. We can go on. That's a different construction phase. The different uh, material assemblages. It's quite interesting but because the latest phase is, is a kind of archaism, going back to a kind of Cretan identity with the drinking cup, which is a mug, which is a typical uh, Cretan shape, while the fourth century assemblage, the, 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 the drinking cup is a cantharos, which is a common Greek drinking cup. So there are different ways to construct their cultural identities, but I don't have time to develop. And we can go on. Uh, so the next program, this is an overview of what was, has been excavated until now. The next program, which will be undertaken, undertook, uh, which you can you can go uh, next one, please, which will be undertaken. This is a necropolis uh, after the restoration. Next, and so the next uh, program, we can go on the two next slides. Yes, here will be to uh, expand the 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 excavation to the northern part of the of the of the cemetery where we know by this from the survey that the the graves and the occup occupation is from the geometric 7th century BC and to see how these very important complex were clearly family and groups gathered together to honor their deads and to honor uh, earlier graves, how this big complex articulated with the northern earlier part of the necropolis, where we could see in the surface traces of small tholoi, and we would like to understand how in the funerary landscape, but also in the spatial organization of this uh, earlier uh, occupation, how it's articulated with the 6th century complex building, which is clearly a building where collective practices uh, uh, were carried on. Uh, and this is the next program for the 2021-2025. Thank you. I went very quickly, so I hope it was quite clear. <laughs> We're going to go for the last one. Uh, Paolo Charradas uh, will introduce us to the project in the city of Brussels. Uh, you have your, your microphone off. Yes. yes. No. First of all, I would like to thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to present the project BASE. Uh, BASE is an acronym for Brussels Archaeological Survey and also a very nice play on words since base is dedicated to the studies uh, of historical basemen and cellars in Brussels. And in French, base means also uh, law. So it's a, it's a very nice choice. Um, I will also present you briefly at the end of the PowerPoint, a small but ambitious side project 
concerning a geophysical prospection conducted on the Grand Place of Brussels. So for people who don't know uh, the, the topography of Brussels, the, the Grand Place um, is the historical and commercial center of the city and one of the most ancient urbanized districts in Brussels and my presentation will focus on. Oh, uh, BASIS uh, multidisciplinary project uh, financed by Urban Brussels. So the Agency uh, for Urbanism and Heritage uh, in Brussels and carried out under the leading of Professor Francois Blary since 2017. Uh, the survey aims at studying with archaeological, technological and archival tools, the historic cellar still preserved in, in Brussels. And I will try to show you why and how such a project can provide relevant information on medieval Brussels. The, uh, the context of the, the research is that of a preventive uh, archaeology of building. That means basically that we operate in private houses exclusively when a renovation project is submitted to the regional, the, the Brussels administration by an owner. So the field work uh, is highly dependent on the uh, individual collaboration and very close with uh, civil society. The geographical scope is, is wide. Huh? All the time it can it can happen theoretically throughout the uh, the urban area, but of course, as well uh, as the site turned out to be an interesting uh, archaeological site. And this potential uh, is usually assessed uh, with preliminary visits uh, we made at the administration's request. From a scientific point of view, we have, sorry, we have defined five priority uh, area in order to uh, better assess the historical and archaeological potential to make a choice also between the many files proposed. On the pictures on the left, the Grand Place district, the Grand Place is there, you can see all the points around. Uh, the Grand Place is probably the most investigated uh, area within the project since five years. So the main uh, purpose of the survey is twofold. First, we study each site uh, for its own sake. We try to characterize it uh, from chronological, diachronic and material viewpoint in order to get uh, a dating as well uh, as, as precise as possible to elaborate a typology and in a final step to uh, produce a scientific inventory. And this last point is very important for the, the administration because the heritage inventories is one of their uh, main core business. An example of the result we can reach with our archaeological method is given by uh, here a three room cellar uh, located uh, 22 Rue des Dominicains, Dominican Street. Uh, as you can see, the, the three rooms uh, uh, date from different periods. The, the oldest and the first one is in the middle position at the end of the, of the Middle Age. Um, a room was added uh, during the 17th century and a sm very small cellar uh, is constructed during the 19th century. So you can see how archaeological structures after study, after dating process, can offer a fine picture covering all great historical periods. So um, in combination with uh, archaeological analysis and the production of graphical uh, documentation, we mobilize various uh, written documents that shed lights on social components and give us valuable information on dating and on architectural features. Uh, shortly here, a, a document of the middle of the, uh, the 14th century. This is an agreement between two owners 
the owners of two neighboring houses uh, on the, the, the Grand Place. Uh, the first one uh, receiving the, the license to extend until the wall of the second houses, but with uh, important condition that uh, uh, an alley, a small street between both houses must be conserved in order to get access to the interior of the block. And here a plan to understand, to, to visualize the, 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 the problem. This is the house to be extended, here the house the neighboring house, and when we have made um, an underground plan of the of this area, we can see actually that uh, a stretch of land at the underground level has been preserved to support the small street between both houses and giving access to the interior of the block. So here. What is important is the combination between archaeological remains and historical records to that uh, that give us information about why and when this architectural feature has been made. Uh, the other important component of the research concerns all the information uh, conserved within the, the cellars, the, the basements, uh, and giving information about the built environment, about the medieval urban fabric. That's to say the ancient network of roads, and in particular, secondary uh, streets, uh, partly disappeared nowadays. The position of the front, built, the front built in relation with the street that we know has changed uh, over time. And also, very important for archaeologists, the ancient ground levels. That kind of information are uh, frequently collected inside the cellar for a very simple reason. Uh, the cellars being less visible from the street, they are also less involved with important transformation in their physical structures. Uh, in other words, cellars are adapted to the needs uh, of the times more than completely uh, reconstructed. And sorry, here a nice example, uh, one year ago, um, in a cellar dating back from the, uh, dating from the 17th century, we have, we have discovered an almost complete wall uh, dating from the 13th century. Uh, this wall uh, presents all the characteristics of an external wall. So uh, a very, a very well-made stone work intended to be seen from the outside and especially an ornamental stone circle traditionally applied uh, on the facade wall, so external wall to be seen from uh, outside. So that discovery proves that the ground level of the Brussels, uh, uh, of the medieval Brussels, or at least this street, this area, has risen about two meters between the Middle Age and the 17th century. And Rapidly, uh, to complement the, the project BAS, we have undertaken with uh, François Blary in May uh, 2018, uh, through a scientific collaboration with two teams from France and, and Italy, a geophysical prospection on the Grand Place made with the latest uh, technology. And you can see on the slide the, the technological device. It's used to, to scan the square and the neighboring uh, streets. So like a scanner, the, the, the technical device is, has browsed every, every square meters of the, of the area. And the final result is there on, the, on this last slide. After, of course, heavy work of, uh, of interpretation, we have, we, we have at our disposal um, an unprecedented and, uh, and precise picture of the archaeological substructures now uh, conserved um, nowadays under the, the cobblestone of the Grand Place in Brussels. And in other words, we have here the, the, a picture giving the, um, the form of the space, if I can say, before the creation of the Grand Place. Okay, I have finished. Thank you for your attention.